Let's look at some example problems of um, evaluating uh, indefinite integrals. So here's one. Let's evaluate the integral uh, of the 11th root of p to the 5th dp. So when I'm evaluating antiderivatives, and that's what this indefinite integral is, when I'm evaluating the antiderivative of a root, I'm going to need to rewrite this uh, so that it's in a nicer form. So remember, um, if I have something with a numerator and denominator uh, as, as an exponent, um, the numerator is the power that I'm taking, and the denominator is the root that I'm taking. And so if I go back down here, um, I've got p to the fifth power. That means 5 is going to be in the numerator, and it's the 11th root, so 11 is going to be in the denominator. So I write this as p to the 5 elevenths dp. So this is the antiderivative of something to a power. So to take the antiderivative of something to a power, I take the power and I add 1, but then I have to divide by that new power. So off to the side here if I want to, if I do 5 to the 11th plus 1, that's 5 11th plus 11 11th. That's going to be 16 elevenths. So I'm going to get p to the 16 elevenths over 16 elevenths. Oh, and I forgot here, when I take this indefinite integral, that's an antiderivative, I have to always have plus c. Right? That's my constant of integration. When I'm dividing here by a fraction, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So that would just be 11 sixteenths times p to the 16 elevenths plus c, and that would be our answer. All right, well, this one looks sort of complicated here. Um, we're fine for the most part here. These are just powers. Um, when I have something in the bottom, I'm going to, you know, like this, u squared, I'm going to want to write that as a negative exponent. So what I'm going to get here is I'm going to leave this 5u to the third minus 2 thirds u squared plus 1 seventh u minus 4 times u to the negative 2 plus 5 ninths you. Okay, so every power is going to go up one, but then I'm going to have to divide by the new power. So I'm going to have u to the third and divide by three. I'm going to get u to the second and divide by two. Here I'm going to get 4 times, I'm going to add 1, right, so u to the negative 2 plus 1, that's going to be u to the negative 1. So I'm going to get u to the negative 1, but then I have to divide by negative 1. Okay, and then the antiderivative of a constant, I just throw on an x. No, uh, not an x, in this case it's u, and then don't forget we have our constant of integration. So I get 5 fourths u to the fourth minus 2 ninths u to the third plus 1 fourteenth u squared plus 4 u to the negative 1 plus 5 ninths u plus c and of course, the u to the negative 1, I can put that in the denominator. So 5 fourths u to the fourth minus 2 ninths u to the third plus 1 fourteenth u squared plus 4 over u plus 5 ninths u plus c. All right, let's see. Example 3. Um, here I've got this antiderivative. I've got something times something. So I've got the antiderivative of a product. There was nothing on that list back there about 
integral of f times g. There was f of x plus g of x, but not f of x times g of x. So I don't have a way of evaluating this antiderivative directly from how it looks right now, but this is easy to fix. I can just do FOIL. So first, 3 times 3x is 9x. Outer, 3 times positive 4 is plus 12. Inner, I get negative 6x squared. Last, I get negative 8x. I can clean this up a little bit, uh, write it in descending order, combine like terms. So I get negative 6x squared, positive 9x, and negative 8x gives me plus x, and then I get my plus 12 at the end. This is an indefinite integral, so I don't have to evaluate the antiderivative. I just need to find the antiderivative. Remember to throw on a plus c. So I go up 1. I get x to the third. I divide by the new exponent. I go up from x to the first to x to the second. I have to divide by that new exponent. Antiderivative of a constant, I just throw on an x, and then I get plus c. So I get negative 2x cubed plus 1 half x squared, plus 12x, plus c. Uh, one thing I uh, haven't said here, of course, I can check any antiderivative by taking the derivative. If I go backwards, bring down the 3, I get negative 6x squared, which is here. 2 times a half, I get 1x, which is here. The, the derivative of 12x is 12, and the derivative of a constant is 0. Now, that doesn't allow me to check all the way back to the original problem, but it allows me to check back to here at least. So if I have made a mistake here, this is the right answer. Okay, the next few examples here involve some trig functions. And, um, you know... What we want to keep in mind here are the derivatives that I know. You know, the derivative of the sine is the cosine. The derivative of the tangent is secant squared. And the derivative of the secant is secant tangent. And, of course, then I've got the co-functions. If I had cosine, cotangent, or cosecant, they would look very much the same. It would be sine, cosecant squared, and cosecant cotangent, and they'd be negative instead of positive. But what I need to find then, when I'm looking at something like this, I have to see something here in my, in my integrand. That's what I'm taking the integral of. I need to find something there that appears here so I can take the antiderivative, right? Derivatives are moving here from left to right. Antiderivatives would be moving from right to left. So I'm taking an antiderivative here. So I want this to be something on this side. It has to look like something like this exactly, or be a, multi, a constant multiple of one of these, or a sum or difference involving these. And so I don't have this here, so I need to try to rewrite this. There could be different ways of doing this, and some of this is as much an art as a science. Um, one thing, a couple things I can do. I can always split up a fraction um, as... Um, as a multiplication problem, um, or I can do other trig identities. Um, one thing here, um, cosine over sine is just cotangent, and um, that would be a product here. Um, the other thing, I could replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared. That's from that fundamental you know, trig identity. But that gives me a difference in the bottom. A difference in the top is fine. I can split apart a fraction with a difference in the top. A difference in the bottom isn't too good. Let's just try rewriting this um, this way. Let's say it's cosine theta over sine theta and then times 1 over sine theta d theta. And what's nice, notice then, you know, across the top, wow, that's a horrible theta. 
Uh, let's try to get rid of that. Okay. Cosine theta over. All right. So cosine times 1 is cosine. Sine theta times sine theta is sine squared theta. So it's still the same thing. Cosine over sine is cotangent theta. 1 over sine is cosecant theta. Now, that's not here exactly, but that is pretty close to this, right? Um, instead of cotangent, it's tangent. Instead of cosecant, it's secant. So that's the co-function. So that makes me think, you know, if I had the derivative of the cosecant of x, that would be negative cosecant cotangent. And that's essentially what I have over here, except I'm starting not with a negative, but with a positive. So that means my antiderivative, remember, is going from right to left. And if that negative isn't here, I need to put it in here. So the result of this is just going to be negative cosecant theta, not x, and then plus c, and that's my answer. It can be sort of hard finding ways of rewriting these trigonometric integrals so that you can get the right answer. So you just need to see some examples and do some practicing. Um, one thing here I could see right away is um, we know that cosine over sine is cotangent. So if I wanted to, one way I could write this, I could say that's really just cotangent squared d theta. And you might think, oh, that's great. Isn't that something I know? No, it's not. We know that the derivative of the cotangent is negative cosecant squared theta. But that's the derivative. I want to do the antiderivative. And the only other thing that involves cotangent, if I started with cosecant theta, I would get negative cosecant theta cotangent theta, but not cotangent squared, right? For my antiderivative, I need to go backwards. So I need to find this cotangent squared would have to be on this right side somewhere, and it's not. Okay. Um, It's sort of hard splitting this up any other way. Um, if, you know, I'm not really sure what, what's going to work here. We just have to try different things is, you know, I can replace that cosine squared with something else. Um, remember, we know that uh, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. So cosine squared theta is just going to be 1 minus sine squared theta. And so I can make that substitution here. Instead of cosine squared, I can say that's 1 minus sine squared theta over sine squared theta d theta. And then I can split that into two fractions. 1 over sine squared theta minus sine squared theta over sine squared theta but 1 over sine is the cosecant. Now actually, if you really know your trig identities, cotangent squared theta is the same thing as cosecant squared theta minus 1. Why does this help me? Well, this now is just the integral of cosecant squared theta d theta minus the integral of 1 d theta. I can just split that into two integrals. And cosecant squared is right here, right? So I can go backwards from cosecant squared to cotangent. It's just I'm going to have to throw in a negative, right? The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. So the antiderivative of just cosecant squared would be negative cotangent. And the antiderivative of 1 is just 1 times my variable.
So I get negative cotangent theta minus theta plus C. Okay. Uh, this one, um, one of the things right now that's a problem, I've got a function times something else. So I have the antiderivative of a product, and I really don't know how to do that. Uh, in Calc 2, we do have a way of dealing with that, something called integration by parts, but we're not going to get there yet here. I'm just going to try distributing to see if that helps. There's no guarantee that it will. I'll get 4, and then cosecant times cosecant would be cosecant squared t. And then I will get cosecant t times cotangent t dt. Um, now, again, what do I know here? Um, derivative with respect to t of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. And the derivative of the cosecant is negative cotangent secant times cotangent. And lo and behold, here's cosecant squared t, here's cosecant cotangent t right there. So those things line up. So this is just 4 times the antiderivative of cosecant squared t dt minus 3 times the antiderivative of cosecant t cotangent t dt. This is my cosecant squared. This is my cosecant cotangent. I've color-coded that. That lines up with what I have here, so I can go backwards to do the antiderivatives. I'm going to have to pay attention to my signs here, though. Um, the antiderivative of negative cosecant squared would just be cotangent. So since I don't have a negative, I'm going to have to make my cotangent negative. So I get negative cotangent t. Now in theory, I get a plus c here. I could call that c1. And then I get negative 3, the antiderivative of cosecant cotangent. Well, if it was negative, I would just go to cosecant. Since it's positive, I'm going to have to go to negative cosecant. And in theory, I get another constant C2. So I get negative 4 cotangent t. Negative 3 times negative 1, I get plus 3 cosecant t. And then I get plus C1 and plus C2. But C1 and C2 are constants. So when I add them together, I just get a new constant. I can just call it C. And the moral of the story is, when I'm taking an indefinite integral that even ends up having more than one part like this, I only need one constant of integration at the end. Evaluate. Notice this one I've thrown in just to make sure we think about this. This one has limits of integration, so that means this is going to be a definite integral, my answer should be a number. I proceed the same way. I'm still going to need an antiderivative, but then I'm just going to evaluate it between these two endpoints. Uh, taking this, this is definitely not something that shows up on my list. Um, we have to use some properties of algebra to rewrite this a little bit. Um, First of all, the cube root of a fraction, I can take the cube root of the top and the cube root of the bottom separately. Also, cube root of 4 is just a constant. I can even just pull that out of the whole integral. Right? It's, it's just a constant. It's a constant times a function, right? Cube root of 4, it's really cube root of 4 over 1. Cube root of 4 times 1 is cube root of 4. 1 times cube root of x squared is cube root of x squared. 
um, to write this. Uh, remember, I need my, essentially, I've got my power and my root. So my root goes in the bottom, my power goes in the top, so that would be the two-thirds power. But since it's in the bottom, that's really a negative exponent. And then to do this, when I take the antiderivative, I'm going to have to take that power and add 1. And so my new exponent is going to be 1 third. So I'm going to get x to the 1 third, but then I have to divide by that new exponent, 1 third. When I'm dividing by 1 third, that's the same thing as multiplying by 3. I can pull that out. So I'm going to get the cube root of 5 minus the cube root of 2. And what you do with this, uh, probably I should go ahead and distribute. Looks like something nice will actually happen here, which is sort of surprising. So remember, I can multiply, as long as I have the same index, I can multiply the inside of radicals together. So I get 3 times the cube root of 20 minus 3 times the cube root of 8. But I know what the cube root of 8 is. Um, cube root of 20, uh, if, I, if there was a cube that went into 20, uh, like if 8 went into 20, I could simplify that cube root, but I can't really simplify the cube root of 20. We could leave it like this. If you want, you could factor out the 3. In this case, I don't know if that really matters. Um, I think both of these answers are equally good. So those are some examples of um, indefinite integrals and how we evaluate them.